Today's video has been very highly requested and it's been a video that I have been dying to do because face balms are, oh man, these are such bold statements to make, but face balms are probably my favorite skincare product, face balms and masks. So if you're curious, maybe I'll do an equivalent video like this on face masks. But I wanted to do, well, also, I always have like 12 million things that jump into my head when I sit down and start recording. This, what I'm calling this video is a series called The Lineup. So I want to do other lineup videos. The other ones I had ideas for were foundation, masks, and maybe liquid liner, which is so random. It's such a random list of products to want to do a lineup video for. But anyway, so this is my first in this series of lineups and it's going to be on face balms. It's also an ode to face balms just because they've just really transformed my skin. I think they're so healing and moisturizing and just like basically amazing. So today I just want to tell you about sort of the multi-purpose ways that I use face balms and maybe give you some ideas for you know, how to get the most out of face balms that you might have lying around. I'll show you my face balm collection and then just mention a couple others as options. So let's get into this. So there's a little bit of sort of ambiguity, I guess, around face balms versus balm cleansers, okay? So products that are explicitly marketed as a balm cleanser, for example, something like the stark grapefruit cleanse and hydrate balm these tend to be cheaper than a straight moisturizing balm like for example the lena hansen global treasures now you could do a cleanse with something like this you probably wouldn't want to just because it's so expensive but there are kind of some products that I feel sort of sit in between a balm cleanser and a balm as a moisturizer. And you can use sort of the cleansing variety as moisturizing products as well. So I just kind of wanted to get that out there because I do think it's, I don't know, like I said, it's a little bit ambiguous. As I'm saying, I do think face balms are multi-purpose and the two main ways that you can use them are as a first cleanse or a and only cleanse if you're not a fan of double cleansing, or as a moisturizing stuff. I have two products that are balms, but that I use more on the cleansing end of things. And accordingly, their prices, their price points are lower than the other balms I'm gonna show you. So the first two are the Stark Grapefruit Cleanse and Hydrate Balm and the Leilani Bless Beauty Balm. The Stark Grapefruit, I, Exclusively will use this as a first cleanse. I absolutely love it for removing makeup. It has kind of like a grapefruit slash cocoa scent. It's really like I I smell like citrus chocolate. That's like what this product makes me think of. It's really good at cutting through makeup. It comes off beautifully with a warm washcloth and then my face is ready for a second cleanse. Most of the time it will either be in Fiore Lustra and Treat, or I'll go in with a mask or the Osmia Black Clay Facial Soap. I personally like to remove the residue of a balm cleanser with something, but you might not need or want to. Um, it also depends on if you're a daily SPF wearer and how much makeup you wear. That sort of will dictate how much you need to cleanse your skin. I wear SPF every single day, so I feel like my skin looks best when I'm doing a double cleanse, but that's just kind of, I guess, you know, personal preference and, you know, your level of how much SPF and makeup you wear. The Leilani Bless Balm is another product that I consider analogous to the Stark Grapefruit because, again, similar price point, I have been using this as a first cleanse. I will also use a little bit of it as a moisturizing step. I'll get to that in a minute, but I really like this product. It has a very girly scent and it's it's hard to describe. It actually triggers a memory from something when I was a kid, like a, a doll that I had. You know how dolls would have like particular like little girl perfume smells? I can't place it. It was like maybe a strawberry shortcake doll or like a My Little Pony or something. But this scent like brings me back to when I was like mini Mercedes. 
but it's very beautiful. It's um, got a very, very silken texture. This actually a little bit more than the Stark I find to be a very, very moisturizing cleanse. I just feel like when I take it off with a warm washcloth, my skin is like really plump. Um, this doesn't have quite the same effect, although I love this one as well. This is just gorgeous. Um, it is a bit of a more luxe way to use this product, I feel like, so a little bit of this just left on the skin as a last moisturizing step is also really beautiful. Something else I wanted to mention about using balms as cleansers like these is that they're really amenable to mixing in some kind of like powdered formulation to maybe amp them up. I'm such a big fan of mixing products together to get even better results. For example, I will often mix the Leilani Coco Lika detox mask in with the Infuri Treat Cleansing Emulsion. It's also beautiful mixed in with the Bless Balm. You kind of get the moisture and the detox exfoliating in one. Or something like the Lena Hansen Global Face Trio, I would throw into a little bit of balm or like over top and just massage that in and rinse it off um, and then go off over with a warm washcloth. I do like all sorts of <laughs> crazy things in the bathroom that sounds um, wrong, but you know what I mean. I think that these are two great options for an affordable price point balm slash moisturizing hybrid cleanser. to kind of the luxury end of face balms. I feel like May Lindstrom Blue Cocoon sort of started it all. That product is exorbitantly expensive and I have mentioned this before but I actually don't find the performance to merit the price. However, I do find the scent and sort of the mind-body effect that it has to merit the price. The scent is unlike anything out there, but I just don't find that product to be quite as moisturizing as some of the other balms that I have that I'm gonna tell you about. The way that I have come to use these sort of luxury sorts of face balms um, is as a very last step in my evening skincare routine, and I have found them to be nothing short of transformational for my skin. Just a bit of um, very brief history to my skin in case you are new. For the first like year and a half of me making videos, I had really, really dry skin, like parched. Um, I think it was due to not cleansing my face properly, not exfoliating my skin enough, and also um, having some dietary issues under the surface that I wasn't aware of. In the last year, my skin has changed completely from dry, dehydrated to normal. As many of you know, I've been doing some pretty intense um, nutritional balancing and work with a medical intuitive that has completely just changed my life in very profound ways. I attribute a lot of my changes to that, although my skin had been changing before that, so I think that it was, you know, starting to cleanse my skin properly and exfoliate regularly also made a really big difference. And sleeping with a humidifier, that's another huge tip I have if you are prone to dry, dehydrated skin. Um, when out of balance, my skin will still veer in that direction, dry. So I can, I've already been able to tell now that we're transitioning into fall, my skin has lost some of the natural, normal moisture that it had all like spring and summer, but anyway. Face balms totally have changed my evening skincare game. I don't use them in the morning because I find that eye product a hyaluronic serum and like two to three drops of a face oil is plenty for me in the morning and then I tend to go over with quite a moisturizing tinted moisturizer but at night when I do like the full spectrum of products sealing everything in with a face balm I can't recommend it enough something about the consistency of balms and how they lock in serum and oil I find to be just far superior to creams or lotions. I find that they will still be sort of on my skin in the morning. I never would find that to be the case with creams that I used. So something about the formulation of these face balms that I've tried in particular have just helped 
helped my skin so immensely and so I'm just so profoundly grateful to them, honestly. So the first two I will talk about are the two that I have been using the longest and they're both from Mahalo and it's their Original Balm and their Indigo Balm. I started using the Original Balm before the Indigo, so I'll talk about it first. I actually still have my Original, not very much of it left, but this is now a couple of years old. It, I don't think it's gone bad. It's probably not as potent anymore, but as you can tell, I've used it very sparingly. I've also been told that they have since reformulated the Original Balm, and I recently got a, had a new one sent to me very generously by Marina. It is a little bit different. I haven't used it long enough to be able to clearly articulate the difference, but the scent profile is slightly different and the consistency is slightly different. But like, could you just basically die for the color of this balm? It is so beautiful. You know, you could use this to cleanse your face if you wanted to. I think this stuff is like gold, so I wouldn't because it's so pricey. Yeah, this just has such a beautiful, vibrant color and I particularly like this one paired with the Mahalo Vitality Elixir. One of the evening skincare routines I will do is uh, a vitamin C serum by my shell, some Mahalo Vitality Elixir, and then a little bit of the Mahalo Original Balm over top. So that's a combination I will use all the time. And then the Indigo Balm is a very, very killing me someone I'm gonna be so snarky right now and I just like zero Fs. someone told me that they were like you lost a subscriber because you talked about how you don't like motorcycles yeah I don't like motorcycles and if that makes you not want to watch my videos then like it's like noise pollution in my neighborhood um okay so back to the indigo this product I feel is the strongest competitor to May Lindstrom's blue cocoon and as I've said a trillion times I think that this product is actually more moisturizing and more worth the money for the performance I find it to be very comparable to the original Mahalo balm basically the difference to me is that it just depends on what other products I'm using and kind of I want to have concordant scent profiles because I'm very sensitive to stuff like that. For example, I love this over something like the Mangosteen Beauty Drops by Skin Owl. A little bit of this in the dead of winter is like a skin savior. This is also makes a beautiful like sort of moisturizing lip treatment. This is really, really um, calming to the skin, whereas I think I would consider the original balm a little bit more healing, just kind of my like intuitive perceptions on the products. I think that they're both just stunning. I'm a huge devotee and proponent of Mahalo products. I think they're just beautifully crafted and very transformative to the skin. I've heard way more raves from people too about Indigo versus the original. I actually think that the original is quite an underrated product. I don't think people use this one as much as the Indigo, but they're both beautiful, like I'm saying, for different things. Um, and then two others that I have currently to show you are, I have a sort of a deluxe sample of the Max and Me Sweet Serenity Balm. This product is gorgeous. It's been in a previous favorites video. Max and Me has like a trio of Sweet Serenity products. They make a powdered clay cleanser mask similar to um, other products I've shown like the Lena Hansen trio. Um, Max and Me has a comparable Sweet Serenity product. And then they also do a rescue balm that's more of like a kind of spot treatment healing balm similar to something I'm thinking like the laurel healing balm that I have and then they have their just kind of straight balm which would be a moisturizing stuff. This I find to be of the healing variety. You know while I think that the original Mahalo balm is also I would consider it healing, the Sweet Serenity is healing in kind of a different way. Similar consistency, it has a, a really kind of um, deep scent profile. I find it to be quite uh, regenerating, I guess would be the word that I would affix to this. Uh, it's really, really like soothing at night. And again, this I will use over, this one is quite multi-purpose scent wise. I can use it over sort of fruitier smelling products I have. I can use it over earthier oils or serums that I have. 
So I think that this is great. And the purity of the ingredients in Max and Me, I find to be just like really unrivaled, but I feel like their products are suited to like higher vibration, higher dimensional living. If you are energy sensitive and use their products, you'll probably be able to feel it because from the get-go, I've just always kind of gotten like a an energy rush from their products. Uh, they're just really, really like pure and beautiful. And I think that that's like the next frontier of how we're all going to operate in life without going like too far off on the deep end and you think that I'm like a little bit weird and nutty. But um, Max and Me is really special. I still am planning to do a full review of other products of theirs I've tested, but I think this is a great, um, a great option, balm wise. Okay, and then the other one I have is probably my favorite one that's currently in my stash. And it's a bold statement because I haven't been using it nearly as long as I've been using some of these other ones. But it is the Lena Hansen Global Treasures <laughs> Eye and Neck Treatment Balm. Uh, this was in September Favorites. I showed you the beautiful gold flakes that are on top. I'm a, I'm a bit at a loss for words when every time I try and talk about this product. It's stunning. Everything from the performance to the scent to the feel of the product, it's just a total like knock it out of the park. It works beautifully, um, for example, with my Infiore lineup of evening skincare. So Complex de Fleur, Fleur Vibrant Solution Botanique, and a little bit of this is absolute perfection. I've also been using this to amp up the Bottega Organica Beauty Heroes eye cream. It's not enough moisture for me at night, so I'll do a first layer of Bottega Organica and then a little bit of this under my eyes, and then I'll take a little bit more and use it on the rest of my face, and it's just so gorgeous. I would say of all the balms here, this, a little bit of this goes the longest way. I just think it's the formulation or the consistency of the product is it like melts upon contact. It doesn't require like any, any working or anything like that. The texture is so beautiful. The scent, I feel like because it has a little bit of coffee in it, it's, I feel like it's particularly well suited for around the eye area. So I think this product is great because it sort of doubles as an eye balm, face balm, lip balm. I mean like everything really. So this gets just a tremendous, tremendous rave for me at this point in time. A couple of others I wanted to mention quickly that I have tried but don't currently have are, that I have written down, are Blue Cocoon by Mae Lindstrom, as I've said. Not really worth it to me for the performance, but yes, worth it to me for the scent. So I would like to get, I, I don't know if I could splurge on a full size, I would like to purchase a deluxe sample of it to just have it around in rotation. So that's another option. And then the other one that I think is really noteworthy and I've recommended to people is the Infiore Fleur Vibrant Balm. I had tried a sample of it as part of one of their discovery kits and it's just, it's gorgeous and it layers so beautifully with all the other Infiori products. I feel like their products work best when you use them like kind of all together. Actually that product, Fleur, Fleur Vibrant and going through using all of the Infiore steps as part of an evening skincare routine was what sold me on how transformative a balm can be to sealing everything in and waking up with just kind of like better skin than you probably ever have. At least that was what I experienced. I recommend doing one of the Infiore discovery sets if you want to get like the full experience of that and introduce you to a similar love affair for face balms. So I know that there are others um, on the market if you have a favorite face balm that I haven't mentioned here and you think I would love, please tell me because now it's very clear how much I love them. As I said, I think that there's kind of one out there for every price point. Uh, there's so much more than what I mentioned. These are just the ones I have direct experience with. And I would love to hear you uh, add and contribute to this conversation. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode or installment of my lineup series. Let me know if you have um, recommendations or suggestions or um, desires to see me do a lineup for a category of product that you're 
most interested in. These are very fun to do, actually, as I'm nearing the end of this one. Thank you so very much for watching, as always. Look forward to hearing your thoughts and very much look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.